Hey guys, John again. I want to take a minute to talk about your website. I get a lot of the same questions from many of you and I wanted to answer a couple of quick things. One of the things that a lot of people ask about is having a responsive website versus a traditional website and what that means. Very simply, a responsive website is designed and built to the different screen sizes that your viewers are gonna look at your site on. So if they're on an iPhone or an Android or a tablet or whatever, they're gonna see your your information presented as optimally as possible for that specific screen. So that's what a responsive website does. It reads the device that the person is on and gives them the appropriate view. Whereas a traditional site, we could build those to where they scale as well. If you think of the front page of, of a traditional website, much like a magazine cover, um, it would be like taking that cover and scaling it up for a bigger screen or scaling it down for a smaller screen. So while all the information may be there, when you're looking at that on a smaller screen, it's very tough to read. So no question today, the responsive website is absolutely the way to go. Okay, so another question that I get a lot is, once my site is built, do I ever need to change it? Well, to put it very simply, the answer is yes, but not because you couldn't just leave it there running. You certainly can. It's just that if your desire, like mine, is to get as much traffic as possible and as many people as possible seeing what you've built and bringing them to your business or your store or whatever you're promoting, then the answer is yes. So Google and the other search engines absolutely look for the relevancy of what's on your site and how often it's changing. So while you don't have to do it every day, it's pretty great if you're doing it, let's say a few times a month, maybe once a week, minimum once a month, so that that thing's there. If you go more than about three months, you're gonna definitely see a degradation in your standings on Google and how they find you. So it would be, think of it a little bit like if it was a magazine, but it was two or three or four months old, do you really want to read that magazine again? There may be some good stories that you fall back on, but it's not as relevant as current. So the idea is you want to keep it somewhat current about what you're doing. Now that said, let's say the about section, or maybe if you're a restaurant, your menu, well, your menu and those sections may not change all the time, but we may have a, a review that changes, or we may have a special, or we may have other things that we keep in there. It doesn't have to be great, big, colossal, expensive changes. It can just be something simple, but it's good to show that you're in there working. All right, next question. I get a lot of people asking, what about web builders? Um, full disclosure, guys. Obviously, I am not the only solution to building your website, although I guess I'd like to be. But um, in any case, there is a spectrum of options when you go to build your site. On the low end of that scale would be the builders. On the high end of that scale would be a team of experts working every day to create something like an eBay or an Amazon that's ever changing and has lots of automation and lots of things going on. We come in in the middle of that. What I'm trying to accomplish for you is I'm trying to give you a site that has a lot of those high-end options built in, a lot of that really easy to use, uh, usability for your client base without that high-end corporate money to fuel that thing. And we wanna be higher up on the scale. We wanna be seen better than those builders get. They don't have the same uh, SEO, which is your search engine optimization. They don't get found the same way as a professionally built site. So hopefully that answers a little of those questions. Um, the other one that I get a lot along with that is if I already have one of those sites, or if I have a blog that I like to maintain, can I continue to do that and integrate it into or continue to use it the same way with a professionally built site? The answer is absolutely yes. There's no problem doing that at all. It's seamless for your clients and uh, be happy to help you with that. So as you have more questions, let me know, but hopefully that uh, gets you started. Lots of options. Okay, social media. Does my social media help my business and my sales and my website? Absolutely, and if it's not, it should be and I can help you with that. So think of your business being in the center and think of multiple streams of income coming in from different sources. Be that walk-in customers, be that mail order, be that phone orders, you know, whatever it is that you get those things from. Social media can certainly be a part of that. Well, the way I like to describe it to everybody is if you think of your website as being very much like your brick and mortar store, it's in the center of your marketing and you're bringing people from these other sources to that center, or you're providing some of the same services within those other fields. So it's a little like, hey, if I have a store downtown and I get a certain number of people that walk into my store, be that from advertising I'm doing or from the fact that my doors are open every day or whatever that is, 
but there's still a bunch of other people up the street at the park. Well, think of that as like your Facebook or your Instagram. Well, maybe there's 5,000 people over there every Sunday playing soccer or whatever it is. It'd be nice to have them come into your business. So that's a way to, to bring them in there. So eventually what we create is, is a, what they call a sales funnel. And we bring either your products to those places or we bring those people back to your website with some well-organized posts or different things that show them what you have to offer too. So yes, it absolutely helps. We can help you with that. We can certainly get into more of that privately if you have questions. Okay, e-commerce. Uh, all the time I'm getting asked, can I integrate e-commerce into my website? Well, obviously, yes, everybody's doing that. Be it merch for your YouTube channel or merchandise programs for your you know, events or whatever you're doing. There's lots of things we can do there that I'm happy to help you with. Um, we can even set you up to where you're selling on Amazon if that's what you want to do, be it books or products. However, um, e-commerce works very well. You have a lot of choices. There's shopping carts, there's PayPal, um, there's Shopify, any of these things and way, way, way more uh, we can integrate seamlessly into your website. So I just want you to know the takeaway is yes, it's fairly simple. I'm happy to go over those options with you and you can figure out what works best for you if you don't already have a solution in place. Last but not least, paid ads versus organic links. Um, sometimes there's some confusion over what that means exactly. Okay, first of all, paid ads. Paid ads are those things that you see at the top of the Google search all the time. They'll have a little thing next to them that says ads or ad right next to a little square. Once upon a time, you might get one or two of those. Now, depending on your search, you can get 10 or more or five or six or more at the top of the screen. Those are ads that people are paying for for Google's pay-per-click service, and they're in that position as long as they keep paying. You usually set a budget with that, and let's say your budget's $500 a day. Well, as long as it's 500, you know, haven't used up your $500, you'll still appear in those for whoever's looking. Those results are different in different parts of the country. Often they're different even in different parts of town. They want to be as specific to people as they can be. Then we have organic links. Organic links are the links that you gain just because your website was built right. This is some of the stuff that we're talking about with some of these site builders. The site builders don't have the same coding and the same things that help you get the same organic links. It's not to say that you won't get any, but that SEO that you've heard us talk about or that you've heard others talk about, they always say SEO, search engine optimization. Well, that's all about gaining those organic links. Organic links don't go away when the money runs out. There's, there's no money to run out in that case. We build the stuff into the site. We build it so that it searches certain key values so that the search engine finds finds you in your region or in your specific business, etc. And then, and then you, those keep paying dividends continually because your site's built properly. Now, both of these strategies can be very useful. It's not that one's necessarily better than another, but we can certainly talk more about what's best for you. Well, that's the fast tutorial on website building for the moment, and I'm sure you'll have more questions. I'm happy to talk to you. I'm here for you. As you think of more things or have more things that you want to develop out, there's more we can talk about relating to web sections, uh, different ways of organizing your website. We can talk about that in a future video, or I'm always here. Feel free to give me a call. I look forward to hearing from you. Let's get your website started today and get you some online success that you've been waiting for. Take care.